Hey, everybody. Welcome to Behind the Mic. I'm Nina Taylor, and I'm sitting here with, oh my goodness, one of gospel music <laughs> royalty. Uh, Charles Woolfolk is in the house. He is back, and we are so excited about it. How you doing? I am doing well, my friend. You're looking amazing. <laughs> it is such yeah. a joy to see you again uh, and to be on Behind the Mic. I'm in the studio <laughs> with all kind of all kind of microphones we can pull in and <laughs> yeah. all of that podcast behind me recording in front of me. But uh, it is a blessing indeed to be with you today. Well, thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. What are we, 25 years-ish? It's, right. it's got 20, 20, about 25 years and about 35 pounds for me. I, I <laughs> can't speak for you, but. <laughs> I'm not going there with you, right? <laughs> um <laughs> Why don't you take everybody back a few pounds ago, a few years ago, uh, just to your beginnings in gospel music? Well, um, we, of course, were uh, a group at one time, Charles Woolfork and the Praise Covenant Choir, discovered yeah. at the New Artist Showcase uh -huh. at GMWA in 1994 mm -hmm. in Indianapolis, Indiana. A um, group of about 40 young people got on a rented bus and went up there and uh, nobody told us we had to scrape up the performance fee. We got there and folks was pulling money out of here and out of everywhere else. And we scraped <laughs> up the fee, <laughs> scraped up our little McDonald's money and sang. And we were signed that night by Benson Music Group, uh, Tara McGee, Gloria Tyler Mallory, that whole crew. Um, and from there, it, it just went haywire. It went crazy. Fred Hammond produced... Uh, the first project, of course, a title, Giving Up the Praise. Yeah. And um, it it just, it was something really, really pioneering at the time because there were not a whole bunch of contemporary young people uh, mm -hmm. with national recording deals uh, like that. Um, it was so difficult. They were like, I don't know where we're going to play this at on the radio. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. no... I mean, long before other other folk were doing it, there were, um, you know, some bass lines and things that Fred yeah. threw in. And, uh, you know, we, we transitioned to Mark Sand Records uh, in the mid-90s and did a few projects with them. And now I'm the proud owner of my own label, Eternity mm -hmm. Music Group, uh, where the new projects awesome. uh, are, are coming out. Wonderful. Now, I remember uh, we met, back in what 96 97 well 97 mm. is when I went to a uh, gospel music and your music was one of the first ones we we got along with Fred Hammond's project and we had a lot of commission you know Clark sisters everybody say oh we had no idea who anybody was and you were just so nice you even came to town <laughs> <and> you, <laughs> churches and we were like oh this guy is awesome you know and just uh, the rest is history. Uh, tell everybody about those early days of, of touring and um, oh. <laughs> some of the places you went, some of the people you toured with. Wow. Our very first engagement, I always like to tell this story because uh, our very first engagement uh, that the record label set up for us was a promo visit to Buffalo, New York. And it was in February of 95. Oh. Well, they had to the snow. Oh no, we 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 got there and they. Um, mm -hmm. I did my basic. I'm not, I'm not my basic training. I was in the army at Fort Drum, so I was very aware of Lake Ontario and the snow. And we're yeah. here in Cleveland, in the Cleveland area, so we weren't thinking too much about it. It was a couple inches on snow. We drove drove up, mm -hmm. and by the time we got there, it was four feet of snow on the ground, literally. Oh, cars oh, yeah. were stuck and stranded and snowed over. Um, but the, the days of touring, jumping in a couple of 15 passenger vans and, you know, everybody just singing their throat dry all the way <laughs> on the road. It was a, a young people group. I could not get yeah. them to be quiet for nothing. So they, they talked getting on the vans while we was on the vans at the venue all the way home. And I was one of the drivers. I, I couldn't get any rest. Anybody that's ever toured with young people. Uh, you know what that's like. But we were all over the country. Bobby Jones, Teen Summit, uh, all of the announcer guild stuff. We we would come in and uh, I just remember um, walking into Disney one year with Bobby Jones and he turned around. We we did the Bobby Jones gospel show on BT. He turned around. He said, Lord, have mercy that they go Charles Woodford, Charles Woodford and his wife. Oh. <laughs> and we felt like we arrived. We were like, Bobby Jones, know who we are. <laughs> but it's because of 
people got to know us because before God's property, I'll say it, before there was a God's property, uh, before mm -hmm. Ty Tribbett, um, mm -hmm. we, we were kind of some of the pioneers of moving and, and mm -hmm. dancing and choreography with the choir. If you saw Sister Act 2, that's exactly how my choir was on stage. We did all the latest stuff. And uh, boy, that could be a good segue for the William Murphy stuff going on right now. But let's stick a pin in that. Um, because <laughs> my, my group was literally, we were ostracized and talked about and criticized and mm -hmm. not played on purpose. And uh, a lot of the time we were looked over for opportunities and engagements. Um, but to see the landscape of gospel change, because I know what those young people put into it and sacrifice, it's a blessing. The genre is wide, wide open right now. That's a good thing to some people and a terrible thing to other folk. Uh, but it, it was great in the early days, all except the promoters who would get you all hyped up to come to their church or the venue. Never happened with, with Nina Taylor the event, though. Um, but, you know, they tell you, we're going to have 10,000 people there, you know, and we got $20,000. You get there yeah. and there's 19 people and, and just as many die. <laughs> so, you know, it was it was tough in the day, but it, it shaped you. It humbled you. It made you appreciate the genre and uh, the ministry aspect of what you were doing for sure. Well, I think back then, a lot of the people who were doing the gospel shows were kind of like doing all the shows. They weren't really, what's a good word? Church folk uh, and they, they kind were of promoters. <laughs> they were strictly promoters, and they were doing things the way they do things, you know. Yeah, yeah. Not like you know now where you can get people that are actually you know in the life per, per se. Oh yeah. Not trying to treat people like that anymore. Yeah. Especially when you go <laughs> south of uh, Tennessee, <laughs> and you. Okay. <laughs> between Florida and and you know uh -huh. it, it's a different world when you tour yeah. down there and. But they yeah. called it the chilling circuit affectionately. Mm -hmm. And uh you you went down there and did what you had to do. You grinded and you made your 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 name known and you visited oh, yeah. everybody, you shook hands, you took mm -hmm. pictures, you signed CDs. That's those square things for anybody watching it though. The square with the disc in it that yeah. a CD. You know, a lot of people don't know what that is no more. So uh, your tapes and CDs and, and you just mm -hmm. made a life on the road. Oh yeah. Um Let's talk about some of the music, which you've had. Your body of work is incredible. It's like, okay, I'm going to put together a show about you. And my God, I don't know where to start. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> talk about some of the music, some of your favorites too. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So I just got this question in another uh, interview early this week. What is, what's your favorite Charles Wolfork song? And I learned my lesson. The favorite Charles Wolfork song is the brand new one. And we'll talk about I that in a minute. <laughs> Absolutely. I ain't talking about I ain't talking about something else right now. Uh -huh, I'm talking about yeah. Walk in the Light. And we'll, we'll talk yeah. about it in a moment. But I uh -huh. would have to say that first album with the choir and the reason being, it was our dream to work with Fred Hammond. We were given three three producers to choose from. Uh, mm -hmm. Sanchez Harley and mm -hmm. uh, um, um, uh, God, Kevin Bond. And Fred oh, yeah. was not even on the list. And I went to yeah. the record label and I said, I have a vision for something absolutely brand new and nobody, I think, can bring that to fruition like uh, the great and marvelous Fred Hammond, um, iconic voice, iconic worshiper, iconic uh, mm -hmm. group, iconic writer, bass player. Um, and mm -hmm. he was close. He was, The record label said, oh, he right up the road. Yeah, we're going yeah, Fred yeah. Hammond. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then, then I'd, I'd have to say uh, the second coming project with uh, Aaron Lindsay. We did a lot of work uh, meeting a lot of great musicians, Marvin Sapp and different people. Um, one of my utmost favorite songs is a song that I was able to write for Karen Clark Shear called uh, Have Your Way. Um, and it was really one of the first worship impact songs that I've done mm -hmm. on that level. That project was Grammy nominated from Karen that year. So it was just a blessing to work with her uh, the the True to God album is always uh, one with, with all of the... I think that's where you came to know me at, the True to God no, album. we had the Second Coming album was the first Second one we coming. got. Yeah. Second Coming. And then, yeah, <laughs> that was the first one we got. Because remember, we, and the, we came in the game at 97. Yeah. Oh, well, the True to God album is so mm -hmm. unique because it was the first project with a Caribbean song, mm -hmm. uh, Jehovah Dance. And that song, people thought I was... Uh, of mm -hmm. Caribbean heritage for the longest. 
Yeah. So yeah. we're gonna we're gonna book the Jamaican guy and the Jamaican was like, Your man no Jamaican, you know, he's no Jamaican. Oh, people <laughs> calling the radio station say would you play uh what were they calling it? Jamaica what were they call it? Jamaica dance or play the they, yeah, they the <laughs> Yeah, I was like, what? You know, and that's what everybody was calling it, Jamaica Dance. The and Jamaica said, Dance. That's not the name of the song. And it, uh, uh, Until you get around some real Jamaicans, they say, hey, what's it for now? You know, I'm not talking about Jamaica. You're not saying, no, you're not saying, you sing like a foreign. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they would call me foreign to my, and I, it was cool because they accepted mm -hmm. me uh, uh -huh. because of the, because of the respect for the culture. And, uh, you know, we went on to do it was a, a tribute thing. I did Caribbean songs on every project that I put out for that fan base in London and Africa and the Caribbean. Um, and we, we haven't stopped as Walk in the Light will we'll, uh, attest to that fact today. Absolutely. So you've had the opportunity to go there. Did you or did you feel strange about doing the music down there, the Caribbean music? No, it, it was so weird. Back in the day, they um, they didn't want you to come down there and do their music. They wanted to hear, <laughs> they wanted to hear the choir stuff, the American music, the foreign, like they call it. No, Don, Don, come and sing a Jamaican song. We want to hear the foreign. We want to hear the foreign. <laughs> so, and I'm like, what? Y'all don't want to hear Jehovah Dance? No, no, we're not, we're not on here. No, we're not all that song. We want to hear some other. So I was singing, I was singing everything. Andre Crouch, uh, <laughs> Richard Smallwood, Fred Hammond stuff, John P. Key stuff. So, um, they did in, in certain areas of the Caribbean, they love Jehovah Dance. Uh, definitely, it was really, really big in England. And when I went there uh, mm -hmm. to the Brixton area, you're familiar with Brixton, of course, uh, uh, John Francis Church at that time, Bishop John Francis, he may have had 120 members at that time. It mm -hmm. was a small wooden floor church in Brixton, and the young people were just jam-packed in there. Oh my God, that track started and you would have thought it was you'd have thought it was Chris Brown or somebody else. <laughs> somebody up in there. How oh, they just love American music. Uh my first time there was in 1996. And then I went back again in 2012. And I went mm. there with a choir in 2012. Now that's the only way I could go. I wasn't even in the choir, didn't know none of the songs, but I <laughs> I was like, well, give them to me on the plane. We'll have time to learn them. And, time to learn it, right. And some of the people who came, they were like, ah, Americans are coming. American come. We're like, really? Y'all excited about seeing us? You know, so when we got off the plane, it was six in the morning, but it was like, I or we were already an hour late for church when we got off the oh, plane. Yeah. So we yeah. had to leave from the plane and go all the way to the church like that. Right? Oh, oh, so we're in the car oh. going, huh? <laughs> yeah, trying to get yourself together and that time change, it, it catches up with yeah. you right when you land. Um, mm -hmm. I remember being down in Trafalgar Square and walking around, uh, mm -hmm. seeing some of the shops. I went over to Harrods and I wanted to do some shopping. I stepped off the curb and I didn't look to my left. In America, you're told, look to your right, then your left. Well, you know, they drive on the opposite side of the street. Yeah, which almost, got <laughs> almost got killed. Almost got killed. I almost got killed by one of them famous iconic taxis when I, I stepped off and didn't look the right way. But uh, we made it out. And uh, I was there. I got to tour that uh, that first time to London with uh, the likes of Dietrich Haddon and Bashan Mitchell, uh, Marvin Sapp. Um, it was it was a ton of us artists that uh, went over. And I got to say, they, they loved me and I loved them right back. And it's been uh, that kind of situation ever since. Wow. That's awesome. Well, you took a little break here from the music industry. We won't go into why, even though I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it, you can ask me or we can let wait for Cat Williams to tell all about it next week. What you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. I mean, a lot of people do that. I spoke with Darwin Hobbs two years ago and he's been on, he hadn't recorded for 10 years, you know. Wow. Uh, yeah. So I think every now and then I took uh, five years out of radio, just mm -hmm. needed you know, sometimes you just need a little break and then you miss it and here you come. So you took a little oh, yeah. break and now you're back. And what, did something happen or, you know, it's like, it's just time. I miss it, you know. No, I, let me tell you, I think that uh, the break was necessary. Let me, let me just get that straight right now because yeah. you've been in the industry as long as I have. I'm celebrating 35 years in professional mm -hmm. music coming up. 
And the, the, the thing about it, in all 35 years, you can set your watch to what's happening within the industry. Not, it's the different players, but the same old thing. Um, mm -hmm. And what, what it started to do was really, really, really mess with me and make me not appreciate the call and the anointing that God had placed in my life to create, uh, mm -hmm. to simply be a mouthpiece of his. Mm -hmm. It turned into, you know, the early days of social media, the early days of the internet. It turned into, I've got to do it because everybody is doing X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z. You yeah. wanted to keep up with the Freds and the Marvin Saps and the Hezekiah Walkers and all that. And, and one thing that I failed to remember was I was an artist just like them. Uh, they, you know, of, of course, a bigger profile for them. But mm -hmm. me in my world, I was just as big to the people that I, I served in ministry. But mm -hmm. when I tell you people in ministry, they don't realize, you may not realize how burnout is so real for mm -hmm. artists, for pastors, for people that serve. And mm -hmm. when you have a choir, especially you're dealing with all of those personalities, mm -hmm. not only the personalities, the issues at their home or if they, they're going through relationship issues, you going through relationship issues. They they dealing with uh, financial issues. You all of a sudden are dealing with it. So yeah, I needed to get away, uh, separate myself. And the Bible even tells us come out from among them and be separate. I had to do that with church folk, with the industry, with 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 the gospel music industry as a whole, because I could not even I couldn't recognize myself and didn't remember why I was even doing it. Uh, was it for my grandmama? Was it to please? Uh, my mother, you know, because I could sing, was out here. And so I just took some time, some reflective time in ministry uh, to to really just reset, reset my life. And there's nothing wrong. And I'll tell anybody, like Shug said in the New Color Purple, if you need to reset, honey, push the button. I'm telling you, <laughs> nothing, I, nothing wrong with hitting that reset button. And when you, when you do that and you rest in God and you rest in what it is that he really foundationally created you to do, he'll prepare you to come back in the right way. I literally woke up four days before my birthday on December. My birthday is December 19th. Uh, I woke up and told my wife, my beautiful wife, Tamara, hey, girl, I know she's going to watch this. Uh, <laughs> so she, Tamara, Tamara uh, we woke up and we were just talking, having coffee. We both work from home. Um, so I, I, I logged on to my system uh, I own and, and operate my own human resources company. Mm -hmm. So I logged onto the system and it just washed over me. The lyrics to this new song just, kept, and it, it was like that with my first album. I wrote a lot of it when I was in the army overseas or when, you know, the songs would just come to you and they were songs that you knew God dropped on you. It was, it was no other thing. I did not stop from that Tuesday, I think it was, or Thursday, I said, I'm going to go. And I told her, I went downstairs. And I said, uh, uh -huh. I said, it came quick. You just kept. It, it, I mean, absolutely. One, one step after the other, I said, I think I want to release a song for my birthday. And she just kind of looked. She said, you sure? You sure you ready to go back? And I thought mm -hmm. the industry was this, the industry was that. I said, whatever it is, it is. I said, all I know is God is saying to do this song. Uh, and the results came like four days later, the song was done. And I think I was calling you like, Hey, Nina, I got another one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you have always, always been at the forefront of breaking new things from me and from my groups in the past. So I knew you could appreciate the story. I know, you know, me beyond the story. So, uh, I didn't want to trust it to, to just anybody because I feel the song is just that special. So. I think when a song comes to you like that, I think everybody, because everybody that I've spoken to about it, they're like so excited and so happy. Oh, I'm so glad he's back, you know. So well, I it, think that's the blessed part. When mm -hmm. it, and it made me cry literally. I, I cried tears when uh, somebody was like, "Man, you belong. Yeah. Uh, you you deserve. It. You paid your dues. You you've been in the industry, you know, forever." Um, they was like, "Last time I see you, your face was black, though." So you know. I, I said, well, well, <laughs> father time is undefeated. <laughs> so <laughs> all I can do is come back and uh, I, I might look a little old and gray. I still, I still, I can still move around though. I, you know, I get up there in front of a choir and do my thing. So, uh, you but, remember uh, when you uh, did our anniversary concert and you opened up for John P. Key? Oh, wow. And I think I told you that was historic because 
the very first artist that we ever opened for at the Public Hall Auditorium in Cleveland, Ohio, was John P. Key. Um, wow. And and he, you know, back then he wouldn't come off the bus until it was time for him to come on. He would <laughs> he would knock that concert out and be right back on the bus, and they'd be had. He mm-hmm. came off the bus to to the door when we was doing, I think it was If I Be Lifted, the song, Jesus said it, ah, and then they was sliding, doing a little TLC moves <laughs> and stuff. And he was yeah. like, Lord have mercy, who leaves chilling? Who leaves chilling up here? <laughs> <laughs> he said, man, y'all almost yeah. made me not want to go. He was so nice to us, yeah. adopted us for a while. He taught me a lot, taught me a whole lot about the industry uh, mm-hmm. early on, the do's and don'ts. Like I said, especially that there's a different set of rules for touring in certain parts of the country. Uh, oh. But it was great to have mentorship like that from somebody like John Piki. But Columbus was special. It was it was wall to wall and oh, it was just next level. I think I came, I only had three singers that day in the band. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was because we were doing more more of the uh, group oriented stuff. But mm-hmm. oh man, it was it was always a joy to come to Columbus. Uh and and definitely for you and great mm-hmm. people at the radio stations that uh, you were with previously, so. Wow, that was a great concert. I still have it on a, a video, you know, on a video. <laughs> we need to I go to the we need to go to the Goodwill and get one of the machines to play that so that I can copy. Oh no, we got one downstairs. <laughs> we got. <laughs> <laughs> it's we have- amazing. My my thirteen year old was like, "Well, how did y'all how did y'all listen to music in your car back in the day? You had to put one of them circle thing one one of them <laughs> albums. You, you yeah. had to put an <laughs> album." <laughs> I said, no, not not quite an album. We didn't have to put albums in the dashboard. That's a CD. He, he didn't know, you know. Um, but it, it's it's just amazing how time is good to some and and bad to others. But uh, God left me here. You know, last year was 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 kind of tumultuous with my health. And I would tell anybody that's listening to this, take care of your health. Don't don't just rest on your laurels because you love the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, don't be a good steward over your body. Get your checkups and. Check your blood pressure. Stop I eating. Men, I think I tell men more that than women. I'm in a podcast Saturday about the same thing about men. What what can they do to be better to themselves? Yeah. And it, you know, Nina, it jumped up on me so fast. You feel yeah. good one day and the next day it's it's pains all over your body. And you know, yeah. the old folks say, well, you, as long as you're feeling them pains, you know you're still alive. I don't want to oh, feel yeah. the pain. Just let Absolutely. me be alive. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't need to feel the pain, but uh, taking care of your health mentally, physically, spiritually, that that threefold nature of your holistic man, I, I'm not mm-hmm. doing holistic or new age talk about medicine and care, but that holistic man, that whole man, your body, your soul, your spirit, you really, really, really have to stay on top of the maintenance of all of it. Uh, I look at my gray beard like I was so glad it came in style and my wife was like, use a silver fox now. I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I had to tell her, I'm just so glad to be here because so many, we lost so many good people uh, to COVID. Um, I was the only one in my house that never caught COVID. Um, my wife, my children caught it. Uh, they were down bad with it. Uh, but thanks be to God, everybody made it out. Um, um, and it's 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 just symbolic of how good God will be when you take the guidance and direction to be good stewards of what he's giving you. So. Yes. Amen goes right there. All right. So <laughs> uh the new song. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> we just went into <laughs> okay, so is there gonna be an album following up with it? There there is an album coming and it, it's just I'm when I get nervous, I kind of scratch this. I've always done this when I since I was like three or four years old. When I'm talking about me, it's just kind of I don't mm-hmm. normally do these interviews where you can see me, so I can yeah. act crazy. And everything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, the new song, uh, it's it's called Walk in the Light. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's a Yoruba phraseology on the end of it, Mashale. Uh, in Yoruba, uh, in Nigeria, the Yoruban phrase, uh, Iyanu Mashale, means miracles are happening, or miracles are happening now. Yes. Um, so... Mm-hmm. Everybody's familiar with that song, Walk in the Light, Beautiful Light. I don't know why that came to me. It was one of my grandmother's favorite songs. Uh, I, I just, I, I put a different twist on it uh, with an Afrobeat feel. Um, so the end of it where it is, the the it turns around and it's, uh, oh, my Shale, Shale, Shale. It's saying, 
we need your love. That miracle is happening now. We need your presence. That miracle is happening now. So mm-hmm. it's, it's not like prosperity preaching where I'm telling you just right. name it and claim it. There is some work you have to do to get the blessing that God says belongs to you. A lot of people don't want to put the work in. Like God is some ATM where you just punch some things up, uh, mm-hmm. give him a 20-second a, a praise, and he bless you with a husband, a car, a house. And It's not like that. God, God wants that relationship. Yes. And yes. in order to get it, we need to walk in the light of his love and, mm-hmm. and admonish him for who he is. If he's that to you, um, it shouldn't be a problem. I like James 1 and 17 where it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above and coming down from the father of lights. Uh, it is, it's symbolic of his favor, his love, his excellence, his blessing. When God sends it, you just know it when it's from God. Um, yeah. And it, it's, it's effortless almost when those blessings come and they light up your life like that. I've walked in darkness through COVID, uh, through, through economic shutdown, through, through the orange president, the other president, uh, I, and, and maybe the orange president again, Lord, help us all, Jesus. But um, <laughs> not to offend any of y'all that want to vote for him. I ain't that mm-hmm. dude. I'm sorry. Call me or email me. We'll talk about it. But, um, you know, there's so much going on in the world. The lyrics even say, this is the time and season. We need the peace of your presence. I cannot recall the last time we had God's peace resting on the church, on the music industry. All the drama that's going on to start 2024. Are you serious? Uh, we're getting criticized for what we're doing in church. Criticized uh, for how we're preaching, what we're preaching, what's allowed in the pulpit, what people are doing. We need to just pump the brakes and rest in God's peace and know that he is the one that's still in control. I don't care what our opinions are. We, I, who am I to judge William Murphy or what his church does or anything else? That church was full of people praising God the way they do it. It ain't for me to judge. William's going to have to stand before God, and God's the, the righteous judge. But if I'm seeing young people, and I know they're not on the street uh, on New Year's Eve and being shot at or shooting at other folk or doing yeah. the things that young people do when they're out and about, I, man, let that man in this church praise the Lord. I mean, I, you know, we were thrown out of churches for doing that stuff in the 90s. So I get it. I, I know it. But don't judge them mm-hmm. and judge what they're doing and the way they're doing it. And you don't even halfway go to church. You, you'll log on and talk about all the pastors and what they're going through and the rumors and everything else. But w- you won't even show up. You won't give. You won't serve in the ministry. But it's a whole lot of this going on online. We have to stop that. Absolutely. We Especially yeah. the church. Stop doing this to each other. Walk in God's light and your miracle can happen now. So you can send your love offering to... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Well, the song is beautiful. As soon as I heard it, I was like, "Oh my goodness, he is back. He's definitely he is, back." He is and back. Some beautiful songs that play on my shows quite a bit. Uh, you did a whole worship project once, which was absolutely uh, beautiful. Oh yeah, yes, oh, ma'am. So there. Yes, ma'am. Now, just to just to tip the hand, the whole album is coming at the start of end of the spring, start of the summer. And it's yeah. called Tune and Vibe, C H U N E and V Y B E, Tune and Vibe. And people say, well, why would you name a song, a gospel song, a gospel album, Tune and Vibe? Tune is a patois word, a Caribbean word, patois, a French Caribbean word that just simply means great song. Uh, and vibe is exactly that. It's, it's the, the presence of great mood, of peace and passivity, uh, a place of rest, a place of learning. Um, mm-hmm. where we can have great music that puts us in a great place and a great mood. I wanted to do a whole album. It is Afrobeat, Caribbean, rhythm-centric. <laughs> um, so hopefully um, everybody understands it. it's not Burner Boy, it's not Davido, it's, it's Charles Woolfork. <laughs> and uh, thanks be to God that we can come back with good tune and vibe for everybody. Wonderful. That sounds Awesome, awesome, awesome. I can't wait to hear it. I know I'll be the first one to get it. I'm not even tripping. But, okay. Uh, are you still doing the impressions? <laughs> Am I still doing? You know, all the people I used to do impressions of ain't here no more. <laughs> yeah, I think people still like to hear them, though, because they love them, and you did them so good. Yeah. Well, you know, my grandmama, I was in the hospital the other day. You might have seen it on social media. I walked up to my grandmama room. I said, Rose Hampson. Uh-huh. It's your grandson, Bernard Matt. 
He said, get up out the bed. The Lord <laughs> said, pick up your bed and walk. And she looked at me like this. <laughs> <laughs> you will get out of here. You and Bernie Mac. I'm going to send you where Bernie at. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I, I did, Doctor Jones, Doctor Bobby Jones, Nina Taylor. It's so wonderful to have you here with us today on the Doctor Bobby Jones show. Yeah, I can turn around and start interviewing you. Awesome. Oh uh, yeah, talented, multi talented. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on my Kevin Hart. He hard to do though. He's hard to do. I got to go yeah. to school on him a little bit more, but I, I'll get yeah. him next time we talk. Him. I'll. Next time we talk, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my Kevin Hart. It'll be right okay. for you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, how can people connect with you? I know you already have thousands and thousands of people connecting with you. How <laughs> well, <handle? laughs> I, I would prefer, I'm going to tell people, the best way to connect with me is on YouTube. Look at me. Uh, look look me up, Charles Wolford. Look up the new song, Walk in the Light, My Chalet. As well, uh, I, I won't get into the numbers, but a lot of people are looking at it right now. Thank you all so much in advance for that. Uh, you can reach me at officialcharleswolfort.com or at my Bandcamp page, charleswolfort.bandcamp.com. Uh, and there's a lot of phenomenal, talented, underground style musicians there, uh, including my son, Ellis, who who's released... Uh, a well, couple I can't of, believe um, it's grown, right? <laughs> he is at, and releasing music like his uncle Aaron Lindsay. So that yeah. Ellis is doing uh, instrumental gospel, well, he got so uh, much instrumental music around him. What did you expect? Uh, <laughs> uh, and then the younger ones are coming. My thirteen, my youngest uh, is thirteen now, my baby, and he's. Uh, if you see on social media, um, mm -hmm. he's thirteen. I posted some pictures. He's got an orange coat on. He's next mm -hmm. to me. And he dwarfs me. I'm six one and and three quarter. I always tell everybody, give me my three quarter. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, Chase Chase is uh, a, a big boy, about wow. about five eleven and two seventeen, size fourteen foot. Um, and and uh, the last you know, time big, I seen him, he was in mommy's belly. He was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he didn't he didn't bust it out all over yeah. the place. Like, <laughs> You know, uh, but it's great. It's great to see yeah. them grow. That's another reason I took a break, uh, yeah. you know, from, right. from music and travel and everything. So you want to be the best at, at as many things as you can yeah. that God has gifted you with. Um, mm -hmm. So contact me. We'll talk about it more when you when you write me or email me. I'll give you some tips on how to feed a 13-year-old behemoth in your house. <laughs> <laughs> he huge. He, he oh. huge. He's woo. Lord have mercy. Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> family of big people too. You know, our, they got it from my grandfather who was six foot five, and uh, the boys are very big. Right? Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, and the appetite, the appetite is going nowhere. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, those those are the places to contact me though. So hopefully, uh, awesome. people will reach out and engage. Um, for booking though, a lot of people mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know where they can reach out to if Absolutely. they want to book me. They and know where would that they be? Always any of the people that you see on my show, they know can go to my website at msninataylor.com and they know you can email me or even call me there at msninataylor.com. They know that. All right. But my brother, you know, I love you. I thank you so much. The song again is called Walk in the Light. Masale. Am I saying it right? Masale. Masale. We it, Masale. it's my yeah, there's a S H, but we it's spelled oh, S E L E. I Oh, that's beautiful. Chale. Yeah. <laughs> somebody, somebody told me that's gonna be my new tongue. Yeah, my chalet. Yeah, I said, well, yeah, if, <laughs> if so, you speaking something. I hope you yeah. understand it. So <laughs> it's beautiful. It is a great song. Check it out for yourself. Everybody who I've said it to, they like, ah, oh, I love this. I need this song now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is a blessing. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping that a lot of them call you and that you know we can get back out here and shake hands and I'll right. uh, get yeah, back that's... out and yeah, mm -hmm. preach and sing and, and workshop folk until they tired of me. So that's what we'll do. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for being on Behind the Mic. Again, check him out at officialcharleswolfort.com, right? Yes, indeed. All right. Thank you. Love you, Thanks. Nina. Thank you so much. God bless.